Today, we are going to compare two popular cameras, the Sony A6300 and Panasonic G7. We are going to take a look at their features, who they are for, how they perform in various use cases, user experiences, and which one is the right one for you. Links to both of the cameras will be listed in the description below. Let's get started. The Sony A6300 and the Panasonic G7 are two digital cameras that were officially introduced respectively in the 3rd of February 2016 and the 19th of May 2015. Let's take a look at how their specs compare to each other. We tested both cameras to assess their performance in different scenarios. Let's take a closer look at our ratings for each of them. Here are our ratings for the Sony A6300. For portrait photography, we will give it a 7 out of 10 rating. For street photography, we will give it an 8 out of 10 rating. For sports photography, we will give it an 8 out of 10 rating. For day-to-day -day photography, we will give it an 8 out of 10 rating. For landscape photography, we will give it a 6 out of 10 rating. Here are our ratings for the Panasonic G7. For portrait photography, we will give it a 7 out of 10 rating. For street photography, we will give it an 8 out of 10 rating. For sports photography, we will give it an 8 out of 10 rating. For day-to-day -day photography, we will give it a 7 out of 10 rating. For landscape photography, we will give it a 5 out of 10 rating. Next, we will take a look at some sample photos from the Sony A6300 and the Panasonic G7. Keep in mind that these photos have editing done to them, so the result from your camera might be different. Let's start with the sample photos. Here are some sample photos from the Sony A6300. And here are some sample photos from the Panasonic G7. Next, let's take a look at what other users of these cameras have to say about them. Here's what people have to say about the Sony A6300. I have been using the A6300 for field research and have found it to be very successful, especially in terms of video use and recording time limits. The camera's ability to overcome the 29 meters 59's time limit with the Open Memories Tweak app has been incredibly helpful allowing for longer recording times. The video quality and audio options are also impressive, making it a great choice for those with specific requirements for video use. Overall, my preliminary testing has been positive, and I look forward to further field testing. I love my Sony A6300. It's not as professional as the A7R2, but it's well made, and the video and photo quality is excellent. It uses the same lenses, has a good battery life, and is compact and easy to travel with. The menu system is similar to the A7R2, and I haven't had any overheating issues. The only downside is that the LCD display is not a touchscreen. Overall, it's a great camera for both beginners and experienced photographers. Here's what people have to say about the Panasonic G7. The Lumix G7 is a great camera for Instagram and a budget-friendly option for YouTube videos. While it may not be the best, it still takes excellent videos and photos. I believe it's definitely worth buying. I'm brand new to photography and decided on the Lumix G7. It's a great camera for beginners with superb picture quality and intuitive autofocus. The 4K features are a huge plus for me as a content creator. The only downside is the limited tripod mount options, so keep that in mind if you need a tripod for your shots. Overall, I highly recommend considering this camera for beginners. To conclude, here are our overall ratings for both of these cameras. Sony A6300. We will give it an overall rating of 8 out of 10. Panasonic G7. We will give it an overall rating of 7 out of 10.